Hi, my name is Pat Flynn, and I'm here to help you get your podcast up and running in no time at all. And it's exciting because a podcast has changed my life in so many different ways, not just with my business, but also my personal life. It's helped me make a better connection with my audience, but more than that, it's helped open up so many new doors and opportunities for me from speaking to writing books to selling courses and all kinds of other things too. So I'm excited that you're diving into podcasting too. Now to start out with in this video, we're gonna talk about equipment and software and all the things you might need to get set up and running on a budget. So I'm not gonna make you spend a bunch of money on, a, on all these big random boxes, which yes, they are useful, they will help, but actually you don't need that to get started. I wanna remove all the overwhelm and distractions for you and just get you going right away. And also make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you exactly what you need to figure out now, the mandatory items for your podcast that you need or else you can't move forward. So let's just dive right in with the equipment that we need. So obviously we're starting a podcast here and people are gonna be listening to your voice. So you wanna make sure you have the right tool that can help best send that voice over to that person's ear when they're listening to your show. You can have the best content in the world, but if it doesn't sound great, people aren't gonna be listening to you for that long. Now, there's a wide range of microphones available to you to help you produce your podcast. And you can spend anywhere between $20 for a cheapo mic or even thousands of dollars for your best sounding broadcasting type microphone. For your podcast though, again, I wanna make things easy for you and I wanna make sure that you don't need any of the other external boxes and all these cords and other things that yes, professional broadcasters use, but we live in a time now where you don't need all that stuff still to sound like a pro. And the microphone that I would recommend that you start out with is this one right here, which is the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB. The price of this microphone is under $100, which is great. It also comes with a stand, a USB cord, and an XLR connection. Now, the beauty of this microphone is that you don't need this XLR cable and the mixers and all those other things that a professional broadcaster might need. All you need is a USB connection, which comes with to your computer to help you sound great. It also comes with a little mic stand, which I would actually recommend replacing with this next item. Instead of using a stand, I would recommend using one of these boom arms for your mic. This allows you to connect your microphone, hook this down on your desk using this little clamp here, this fits in, and then you're able to bring the microphone to your face, keep it off your desk, and it allows you just for more flexibility. Now, in addition to that, I would also recommend what's called a shock mount. Now, a shock mount, as you can see here, allows the microphone to be suspended sort of in midair. And what this does is it allows for the vibrations from your table and your computer and any other equipment. Perhaps you might bang on your microphone a little bit. It allows those vibrations to be absorbed by these little rubber bands here and have the sound not in your mic. All right, and then finally, the last thing you need is something that helps you reduce the plosives. What are plosives? Plosives are your B words and P words that when you blow into the microphone with those letters, it'll create a popping sound and you do not want that. So you can use what's called a pop filter or something like a windscreen to help stop the plosives from happening. Okay, so to recap those things one more time, you have the microphone, the boom arm, the shock mount, the windscreen or pop filter, and then of course you need to plug it in, USB. And if you need a dongle, you can use the dongle too. And then finally, the links to these products are below this video. All right, so after you plug in, make sure that you fire the mic on and then go into your systems preferences into your computer and uh, find the sound and just make sure that the ATR USB microphone or the mic that you plug in is the one that's highlighted so that we know that the sound from our voice is going through the mic and into the computer. Now that we're done hooking up our equipment, we're gonna dive into our editing software so that we can record our voice, chop off those audio clips, and also create what would be eventually a podcast episode. Now to start, you're gonna watch me do a super quick and basic tutorial on GarageBand, which is for Mac users. If you're on a PC, you can use Audacity, which is also free too. All right, so I'm gonna keep this super short and sweet. However, if you want a more detailed tutorial about GarageBand or Audacity, I have a tutorial for each of them both below this video. Okay, so really quick, we're gonna open up an empty project here in GarageBand. And then really quick, we just wanna make sure that the microphone that we have selected is the one that we want. So as you can see here, input one, it does say the ATR USB microphone. So we're clear there and we are just uh, recording using a microphone. So great, we're gonna hit create. And you're gonna now see one track. This is a single track and tracks work like layers. If I had a second track, which I could add down here if I wanted to by uh, hitting that plus symbol and doing the same thing, I can hit create and now we see 
two audio tracks. And depending on the one that I'm highlighted uh, on is the one that's going to be recording. Now, why would you need separate tracks? You would need separate tracks for different voices. Perhaps one track is just for the interview that you're recording. Or maybe you have some music or voiceovers that you're just going to drag and drop into this. Either way, it's nice to have it organized like that and not just have it all live on one line. Now, before we get going here, remember, we are recording a podcast not producing music, which GarageBand is uh, primarily built for. So we're going to change the settings here from bars and beats to time. And to do that, we just need to click on this drop down menu here and select time. As you can see, now we have uh, an understanding of how long we would have podcasted for. And then we can turn off these other devices here, like the countdown or the metronome. And now we're all set to begin recording. And to record, all you have to do is hit the red button there and or R on your keyboard like this. And now I'm recording an episode. And as you can hear and see as you're uh, following along, you can see waveforms depending on when I speak and how loud I speak to. Now, looking back here, we can see a playback. We can actually drag this playhead all the way back to the beginning and hit play, and we can listen to exactly what we just said. And now I'm recording an episode. And as you can hear and see as you're uh, following along, you can see waveforms depending on when I speak and how loud I speak to. As you can see there, when I got a little bit louder, the waveforms are much higher. Now, just some really basic editing tips for you. You want to make sure that when you're editing, you get as precise as possible. And to do that, you will need to zoom into those parts that you want to delete or change or move around. So let's zoom in really quick. You can do that a couple ways by dragging this slider over if you wanted to, or you can just use the pinch zoom on your uh, laptop if you have one of those as well. And what I want to do is get rid of that loud part. Let's say I just didn't want that anymore. So I'm going to find that loud part. And I know because of that waveform that it typically will start right there. And if I were to play, you'll hear that loud moment. How loud? But let's say I wanted to get rid of that because it just didn't fit into my episode. It, maybe it was a mistake. Sometimes you might sneeze or cough during an episode. There are going to be moments when you'll want to take something out. And to take something out, all you have to do is essentially split this recording into two and then remove that part. So to do that, all you have to do really simply is to move that playhead to where you want to make that split. You go to Edit and then hit Split Regions at Playhead. The shortcut here is Command T. So I'm going to do that right now, and you should see it split into two. And now if I want to get rid of this one, I can just delete it, and there it's gone. Now let's say I didn't want to do that, but I actually wanted to insert something in the middle. So I'm actually going to undo my delete there. I'm going to slide this over. And then now I'm going to record something in the middle here just simply by pressing Record like this. Hey, this is the recording in the middle. Woohoo! And now I know there's a gap here, so I'm going to move this over just a little bit. And now I'm going to play all of it, starting from before that gap and then after. Depending on when I speak and, hey, this is the recording in the middle. Woohoo! How loud I speak to. Now, before moving on, one more really important tip. When you are recording audio, the last thing you want to do is record audio that's too loud. The technical term for this is getting too hot with your mic, meaning it is so loud that when a person listens to it on the other end, it sounds distorted. And the way that you can check to see if your audio is too loud is either by looking at these waveforms. If these waveforms extend beyond the size of this track here, then it is too loud. Or as you're recording, you're able to see this green bar move into the yellow. Yellow is OK. But if it gets ever to the red, then that means that you are probably too loud. I'm going to hit record here and do a little clicking noise that I know will fire off a red, uh, a red mark here. And you'll see exactly what happens and also what it looks like on the waveforms here, like this. You see how it bumped up to the red there? And now look at this mark here. It goes from all the way to the top to the bottom. That is too loud and it will never ever be processed in a way, even with as much editing as you want it to do, in a way that sounds great for the user listening to your podcast. So the best practice is to play around with the audio volume before you record so that it gets as high as it can be without firing off to the red at your natural sounding voice. All right, and then finally, I want to share with you how easy it is to import audio files from elsewhere into this podcast episode. For example, voiceover work or perhaps some music. All you have to do is download that music. And if it's music, make sure it's royalty free. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop that file into this second track here. There you see the waveforms pop up. And if I drag this over to the beginning, now when I hit play here, you're probably going to hear the music at first and then my voice come in. However, I can already tell that the music's going to be too loud. I'll show you how to solve that in just a minute. But let me hit play and see what happens. <laughs> You can barely hear my voice. So what do we need to do? We need to adjust the levels of both ourselves 
and the audio file here from the music. So to do the music really quick, quite simply, you just have to turn the volume down uh, for all of them if you wanted to do that. In the more technical tutorial that I share with you, I show you how to fade out and do things like that. But this one, let's just turn this down maybe 15 decibels and play with that. A lot of what this is is just experimentation because you can always change things and uh, keep, keep going through to make sure it gets better and better. So let's hit play and see what happens now. And now I'm recording an episode. And as you can hear and see as you're uh, following along, you can see waveforms depending on... It's getting a little bit better. Let's turn it down even more. And now I'm recording an episode. And as you can hear and see as you're uh, following along, you can see waveforms depending on when I speak. Sounds a little bit better. Now we can obviously continue on and uh, make this uh, perfect, but we don't need to do that right now. What we need to do is continue talking about the rest of this tutorial so we can get you set up. All right, so now you understand about your podcasting equipment and your podcasting software. You can go ahead and get set up with those now. You can place your order so you can have time for those things to come in. But really quickly, I need to share with you some important things that you have to nail down before you can actually get your podcast published. All right, three things. Number one, you need to pick a podcast name or a show title. Now, a lot of people ask me questions about this, such as, Pat, can I use my name as the podcast, like the Tim Ferriss show? Absolutely. Can I use the name of my brand to create my podcast? Yes, like the Smart Passive Income podcast. Or can I do something that's not my brand name and not my name, but it's just the name of the podcast itself. Yes, you can, just like Amy Porterfield's The Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. You wanna pick a name that works for you. Now, of course, you could spend a year coming up with the perfect name. And my biggest advice to anybody starting anything is that at some point, you're gonna eventually have to just pick something and move on. Is it a permanent thing? No, you can always change it later. So that should help you out. Next, you're gonna to have to come up with some sort of show description. This is gonna be a summary and really your pitch for why people should be listening to your show. This is what's gonna live on iTunes and other directories, and it's gonna be what people read to decide, yes, I wanna to listen to this, or no, this is not for me. And also keep in mind what keywords to include in the show description. Don't keyword stuff, don't make it sound unnatural. Remember, human beings are reading this, but do include certain keywords that you know that your audience is gonna be perhaps typing in because iTunes is also, in addition to a podcasting directory, it's a search engine. And then finally, really important, you're gonna need to create some sort of podcast artwork, meaning a cover for your podcast. And this is what people see actually before they listen to any of your shows. So it's really important that you spend some time with this. And so go into the categories that you think you're gonna be involved with, look at what's there, see how you might be able to stand out from the crowd. And eventually you'll need to create, whether on your own or you hire somebody else to do it, a 3000 by 3000 pixel square image that has your podcast artwork and perhaps your show name or whatever other elements you want. But don't put too much in there because remember, people are looking and finding these podcasts on their phones. So you want it to look great at a small scaled down level too. All right, now there's a couple things you can do from here. Obviously you can watch the next video, which is gonna walk through a number of uh, recording tips, how to do interviews, exporting your podcast, those kinds of things. But I would highly recommend you also download the podcast cheat sheet. It's a free guide I have for you. It's gonna walk you through a lot of the more finer details of the start of your podcast like how to actually make sure your show stands out from the crowd, how to plan your first few episodes, that kind of thing. The link for the podcast cheat sheet will be below this video uh, on YouTube here. So just open up the description, you'll see the podcast cheat sheet right there, click through, you'll get access to it right away and it'll help you through a lot of these beginning stages, especially here for uh, the first video here in this mini course. So awesome job, keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next video. Or if you have a dongle that's needed, uh, you, you can put those together. <laughs> Use darn it. Just, no, we can do both. We can do it perfect. Okay, one more time. USB, and if you need a dongle, you can use the dongle too.